conferência de imprensa com August Ong, namorado para as meias finais deste Leopardo Porto Open. Congrats for the win, uh, please get swing for you. Your thoughts about the match, please. Thank you. Um, I thought it was a very difficult match. Obviously, Arthur is a very, very strong player. He, um, he takes the initiative out of my hands with his big serve and aggressive game style, trying to go to the net a lot. So it was a very challenging match. Um, and it really came down to who could who could take the initiative first. I managed to hit a lot of good returns, especially in the beginning of the match and towards the end of the third set as well. Um, and I was able to, to hold on in my own service games um, by hitting some, some good serve, serves at big moments and controlling with my forehand. So, so it came down to you know, a few big points here and there, but uh, I'm very happy that I was able to stay uh, mentally tough after um, losing the second set. Uh, your opponent today has a pretty fascinating story. I wonder if this is something that you, the other players, also know about. Uh, did you know it? Yeah, I, yeah, I heard last week about his car crash, um, which was horrible. Um, it's it's so impressive how quickly he's recovered, and and even that that he's able to to play tennis. I met Arthur uh, last week, uh, last year. We played against each other, and he beat me in in France, um, and then. He said that uh, it happened after uh, the tournament in Palm Spike. Yeah, we both competed in that one too. So I'm, I'm, I'm so happy that he's still able to, to compete. And, and I'm, I'm blown away by uh, that he's able to play at such a high level so shortly after such a horrible event. Uh, you just won your first challenger, and it was a challenger 50. And I kind of always wondered, like, among the players, do you guys like look at these categories too much? Like, you know, because this is a one for five, would it mean like a lot more for you to win? Because obviously the points, the money, yes. But like, is a challenger title a challenger title, or do you also pay attention to the to the numbers a lot? I think maybe a challenger 50 is is less than a normal challenger title. Um, also because it's, it's I think it's relatively new yeah. the format so I think if you win a challenger 75 or above then it's it's mm. a challenger title but I mean I'll take it it was a challenger 50 so I'll take the challenger title um, but you know as a tennis player you look at it from a confidence standpoint you can say the same thing about Alex Martinez in this tournament he made a great run um, Last week in Segovia, and he, he's coming into this week with a lot of confidence, uh, trusting his game in the big moments. And, and I'm doing the same after a good week in Nottingham. And then Pozo Blanco had a little bit of a slip up in Segovia, but I'm back on track here now. Um, so, so winning a lot of matches just kind of propels you towards winning even more. And how do you, how do you explain this, this moment, your shape at the moment? What happened? to play so well in the past three weeks? It's actually funny. So, I, um, a couple weeks ago I was playing in Halbon and I was noticing that I was losing a lot behind my first serve. So I went back and I was looking at the match and I was like, what's happening here? And then I saw uh, after my, I had the serve, I get a forehand, which is what I want. But then my forehand was, tr the second shot was trailing a little bit towards the middle. So I was playing a bunch of guys who were standing far back and then they got it and hit it high to my backhand and all of a sudden the punch neutralized. But I knew that I was trying to be aggressive, but I was just not hitting my targets. So then I decided to aim a little bit shorter. So it would be like this far behind the service line instead of aiming this far from the baseline. So by making that adjustment to aim shorter, now when I don't hit my targets, I still get the angle out. So it was, it was actually quite astonishing how, how little I changed, but immediately I started winning more. I made it to the finals of 25k in Denmark on clay, played a good loss in Italy the next week, but played a, played a good match against Pellegrino, then won nothing in Pozo Blanco, now I'm here, uh, Segovia and here. So um, I'd say that's the biggest thing that changed. But that being said, I've been working hard for a long time and uh, I've gotten better and better and then now it's just when it comes out in the results as well. Great, thank you. Just, just maybe one, sorry, sorry, John. Yeah.
Tennis is growing in Denmark, of course. Uh, it started with Caroline outside, and now you're at Holger. Can you talk a little bit about the roles for you growing up? Well, yeah, tennis grew, especially in the last few years with Holger and Clara coming up and being the, the Danish stars of tennis. Um, I, I obviously went to college uh, for five years, which a lot of Danish tennis players are, are, are taking that route. And for me, it was great. I wasn't good enough to play professionally when I was 18. And then college was a, was a very good road for me to improve, uh, get, a, get an education as well, and, and prepare to play pro. Uh, does well, that answer the what, question? What did you study, by the way? What? What did you study? I studied theater. Oh. <laughs> does that help a little more? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, but there's a lot of similarities. Do you sometimes see theatrics from opponents? Uh, I, mean... I, I don't think about it that way. No. Um, but I'm sure, I'm sure a lot of guys try and do different stuff. <laughs> but now that you're starting to, to be more of a presence on tour, what does it mean for you to have someone to look up to like like Um I'm just really, really happy on, on his behalf. and. Um, I think it's really cool for Danish tennis. Um, I have a lot of guys that I look up to. Holger isn't Holger's style of tennis isn't what I'm trying to do uh, because he's he's so quick. I I can't. I'm never gonna be able to move like he does. I have a different skill set. So so I look at other players. Last year I was looking a lot at Chris Eubanks, looking up to him um, because he's trying to be really aggressive off the second serve and hit huge forehands and just really. I can take the initiative. And that's what I want to do. Um, but it is definitely really important and really cool for Danish tennis to have these role models as uh, Holger and Clara and Caroline to look up to and and uh, you know uh, follow in, in the big tournaments. Maybe just one more. I would say tomorrow's semifinal is the biggest of your career. Um, yeah, I guess so. So what so. do you do today, or do you relax, or maybe start thinking about the match? What do you do in the next few hours? I don't do much. <laughs> <laughs> I just eat. Do you go for a walk? Do you go to the hotel room? I, I, I'll go. Um, I'll do. I'll, I'll go to the physio, um, and I'll take an ice bath, uh, get a massage as well. My legs are a little bit sore, um, but they've been sore for four weeks. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just trying to trying to do as uh, recover as best as I can. Maybe I'll do a little bit of laundry tonight. Uh, my parents were here, but they left this afternoon, so... So you have to do the laundry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Did you have time to explore a little bit? Or not uh, really? We went to um, one of the uh, bridges, I forget the name, but it was it was such a cool site on the on the river yeah, and with the, at the small castle on top. Um, but, but that's it. I was kind of hoping to go surfing if I had a day off at some point. Um, so I don't know if I, I don't think I'll have time anymore. You keep winning. Yeah. So it's, it's, a, it's a good problem, right? <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah. I haven't seen much, fortunately. It's a good problem. Yeah. Okay, thank right. you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.